This video shows how to back up your files to a USB flash drive or to any storage device anywhere. To back up your files, you need only two things. The first is a storage device to back up to, which is in this case a USB flash drive, but can be any storage device anywhere. The second thing needed is a backup program, which in this case is Karen's replicator, which is freeware. Replicator is set and forget. After it's set up, you never have to see it again unless you want to. It's at karenware.com. There's a link in the Show More section underneath this video. If you need help to download and install Replicator, then please click the link you see here. This video that you're watching now will pause, the new video will open over it, and you can return to this video whenever you wish. After Replicator is installed, there are four steps to this job. Steps 2 and 3 are for knowing how much backup space you really need, and for setting up your backup drive. Then steps 4 and 5 are for setting up Replicator. Replicator has other settings, which are universal settings that apply to all jobs, and then there's setting up the actual backup job. Assuming that you'll back up your My Documents folder, and that you'll back up to a USB flash drive, the question is, how big a drive do you need? Well, bigger is better, but to find out what you really need, open your My Documents folder. You might be using the icon view, which is the default, or the list view, or some other view, but it makes no difference. It's all decoration. The machinery underneath is the same. In the My Documents folder, in the toolbar at the top left, click Edit, Select All. Everything is highlighted, showing that everything is selected. Then, in the same toolbar, click File, Properties. A dialog opens, and the file size shown is for everything, because everything is selected. Use the biggest number you see, and you need at least that much backup space. In this case, I need over 4 gigs of backup space, which means an 8 gig USB flash drive. But, very few of us ever make the My Documents folder smaller, so more is always better. And that's what we came here to find out, so close it down. Always close a dialog with the Cancel button, unless you have reason to do otherwise. The Cancel button makes no changes on your computer. To deselect something that is selected, just click any place that's not highlighted. Whatever media you use for backup, a USB flash drive, an internal or external hard drive, network storage, whatever, you really don't have to do anything except plug it in and go. But, remember that a backup must be usable. The whole process is wasted time and effort if you discover you need your backup, but then can't find what you need. So, to try to stay organized, one thing to do is right-click the backup drive and rename it to something sensible like backup drive. In this case, the backup is an 8 gig USB flash drive, so I'm giving it a name that will tell me that when I see it. And then it might make sense to right-click inside the backup drive and create a folder. This way files won't be scattered all over the drive, and if the drive is big enough, it can contain more than one backup. I'm just creating a folder named Back01. And last, Inside the main backup folder, it's probably a good idea to right-click and create folders with the same names as the folders you're backing up. In this video, we're backing up the My Documents folder, so I create a folder with that name. Again, the idea is that files won't be scattered all over the drive. They'll hopefully be where they can be found. Remember that any time you do need your backup files, it's probably a tense situation not a good time to rely on memory. The whole point of this exercise is that if you ever do need something, you'll be able to find it. And that takes care of setting up the backup drive, so next is setting up Replicator. Replicator's other settings are universal settings that apply to all jobs. The good news about these settings is that you can't be wrong. They set your personal preferences, and you can change them as you like. Start Replicator, Launch Replicator, and of course click to Edit Settings, 
Then click Other Settings. The two main sections here are Log Contents and Miscellaneous. There's also a Global Exclusions section, but things get a little bit geeky in there and none of it is needed for what we're doing. If you want to look around inside, just use the Cancel button to exit. Getting back, there is no right or wrong here, so I'm just going to show you the settings I use. Under Log Contents, the log can be so detailed that it's hard to read. Mine is set to show only errors or failures, which are shown in red. Is there ever a need to look at the log? Well, I look at it now and then, and clear it so it starts over sometimes. Going to the Miscellaneous section, the first selection, for me Replicator runs all the time, so it starts whenever User signs on, my username is User. The next two items, Replicator starts already minimized in the system tray, which is the area around the clock, so essentially it's invisible, always running and out of the way. These next two items, the computer might have been turned off, so obviously Replicator could not run, so I don't see any need for telling me that, just run it the next time it's due. The next three items have to do with warnings. The first speaks of, if I create a job that replicates deletions, I do want to leave that one checked, which is activated, it will come up again in the next section of this video. But I do not want a warning to pop up whenever I shut down or restart the computer, and I'm the only user on my computer, so the last two I deactivate. The last item in Other Settings, I don't want my computer beeping at me, I have sounds turned off, I'd rather have it flash. That finishes the Other Settings tab, which probably you'll never have to look at again. The next and last section is setting up and running a backup job. When creating a backup job, if you back up to the wrong folder, you might wind up with the wrong types of files mixed in with each other. This actually won't hurt anything, but it is a mess. To prevent this, create a backup folder before you create a backup job, as was done in the second section of this video. Then click through to the folder you already created, and mistakes are not likely. That said, to create a backup job, start Replicator if it's not already running, and nothing seems to happen. But you remember in the last section Replicator was set to start minimized and to start to the system tray, so there it is. Click the tray icon, it only takes one click. Click to Edit Settings, and click to create a new job. The dialog that opens is not as complicated as it might at first appear. It's actually divided into three sections. The sections are What to Back Up, How to Back It Up, and When to Back It Up. There are two additional sections. Tags allows for variables in backup jobs, wildcards, and Filters makes it possible to include or exclude certain types of files, but these are not commonly required, and if you're geeky enough to need them, then you don't need me to explain them. Getting back to the What to Back Up section, What to Back Up in this case is the My Documents folder, so probably a good job name is My Documents. Type that in, or type in any name you please. Click to browse for the source folder, and My Documents is right there. A couple of clicks, and that's done. Click to browse for the destination folder, and this time start in My Computer, click whatever drive you're backing up to, and click through to your backup folder. By the way, this is called Drilling Down. Click to select the backup folder you're using, OK Everything, and the What to Backup section is finished. Here in the How to Back Up section, I'm going to describe the settings I use, which I think will work for most jobs. To begin with, here are the default settings, which are fine, but personally I do make some changes. Going item by item, include subfolders, yes, back up the whole My Documents folder, both files and folders. Copy only if changed or added, yes so any file or folder that hasn't changed, Replicator simply skips over. 
changed how. Compare time of last modification along with copy only if source is newer is reliable so you always have the new version in backup. Compare file size. Yes, it can happen that a file becomes damaged in such a way that the timestamp is correct, but the contents are corrupt. Comparing both the timestamp and the file size guards against this. Replicate deletions? Yes, otherwise the backup folder eternally gets bigger, which obviously could become a problem. And this relates back to the warning I spoke of in the last section. The Replicate Deletions setting deletes files and or folders, so I leave that warning switched on because I don't mind being reminded to be careful. Move deleted items to the recycle bin. I have this switched on as a last line of defense, but this means that the recycle bin is being filled up when you don't necessarily know it, so empty it sometimes or use your judgment. Test connection to source drive before copying? No. This applies to perhaps a network that isn't always active, but it's not needed for this present purpose. Delete old copy before creating new. This is a space-saving measure to save room on your hard drive, but it's generally not needed. Or if your backup space is getting that tight, then getting a larger backup device as soon as possible is probably a good idea. And that's the how to copy section. Next is when to copy. The when to copy settings in Replicator are pretty much self-explanatory and everything is contained in one dialog, so I'm just going to click through the dialog for the sake of familiarization and to show how the settings change. Still there is the question, how often to back up? The answer is that there is no hard and fast rule, it's whatever you think you need. So now the question becomes, what do you think you need? But of course you don't know that because you've never done this before. So here's my two cents. You often hear about backing up once a day, but I consider once a day to be minimal because if it comes to that I don't want to lose a full day's work. I personally back up every hour. I found out there's a belief that backing up too often will wear something out, but this is not so for two reasons. First, your hard drive spins whenever your computer is turned on, and of course the electronics are turned on, so whether they're being used or not makes no appreciable difference. And second, remember that only changed files are copied when a backup job runs. Replicator skips over everything that hasn't changed which is by far the majority of files. So all in all, the backup process really makes no difference. It causes no measurable wear on your computer. In both cases, the enemy is not everyday use. The enemy is heat. So keep your computer in a place where it can get cooling air. And while I was putting in my two cents, the backup job has been scheduled. In this case, the schedule is for every hour, but your schedule will be whatever you judge best. But there are still two things to point out. First is that Replicator minimizes to the system tray with the Minimize button. Some programs or apps that run in the tray will minimize when the Exit button is clicked, but Replicator will Exit, so use the Minimize button. Second, after the first job is set up, you'll probably never have to set up another, even if you decide to back up some additional folders or files. This is because you can duplicate a job. To duplicate a job is as simple as clicking Duplicate Job. All your settings are duplicated, so all that's needed is a new name, which can be any name you like, and to set the source and destination folders. You don't have to change the start time of a second, third, or any number of jobs. When jobs are scheduled to start at the same time, Replicator runs them in sequence. As always, it takes longer to explain than to do. Backing up your data is really very little trouble and very small expense with a very large benefit. It's insurance against mechanical failure, and sooner or later it will save your bacon. So, congratulations on keeping yourself out of trouble by planning ahead. That's the smart way to go. I hope this video has been of some use to you, and thanks for watching.